is it that makes both bodybuilding and being a psychic more effective? Told you. Failure. 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 <laughs> now we are learning more about how failure can be uh, put to use, right? Okay. So, just wanted to share that a little moment of epiphany. Wow, um, you suck, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> you give you two suck I won't okay. tomorrow. <laughs> no, really. I mean, it's it's just. I think goals are what we're talking about. Yeah. You just have a goal. And you just, you know, my whole thing was become the world's greatest psychic. You know, and then after that, it's like, what now? You know, it's like, can you find out? When you get to the top, you gotta find another mountain to climb. All right. So now we have Kathy McKenzie. Kathy's been a friend for a while. She's a great writer. She writes for. She's been a journalist for 30 years. She writes about gardening and sustainable living for the Monterey Herald and other publications. What does that sound? Yogurt <laughs> Oh, okay. Yogurt glass. <laughs> so, um, she's been with the Monterey County Skeptics for three years. And, uh, yeah, we love the Monterey County Skeptics. And we want you all to join. All these new people, now hopefully we've, we've given you uh, a reason to fail. <laughs> okay, so, so join us, and uh, she's going to talk about how to spot a BS story on the internet. <laughs> and if you Open don't know eyes. that, you will, know, you will soon we'll be very good at that. Where's Kathy? Where okay, okay, let's hear it for Kathy. <laughs> I have something really exciting to tell you about. Did you know what's going to happen tomorrow? Tomorrow at 9.57 Pacific Standard Time, gravity will be suspended. <laughs> oh my God. Really? I'm not kidding. Have you guys heard about this? Have you heard? I, and I know it's true because I saw it on Facebook. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Totally bogus, totally bogus, but this is a story that is making the rounds on Twitter and Facebook. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to talk about this topic today and about how to spot a BS story on the internet because it's really one of my pet peeves. It's one of the things that just drives me nuts. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a journalist. I'm not like a heavy investigative news type journalist. I write about fun stuff like gardening, but still, I'm a journalist. And it really makes me crazy when I see this fake stuff making the rounds and people actually falling for it. When there are so many real journalists out there who are, you know, doing great things, taking great pains to make sure <coughs> the stories are real. Sorry. Oh, sorry, the mic. Okay, what do I do with this? Um, Anyway, there's so many great um, journalists out there who go to great lengths to make sure they have accurate information, and they're even risking their lives to get that information. And then you have these bogus things making the rounds. Um, so uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the zero-G thing, because it's actually kind of amusing. Um, this actually started out as an April Fool's joke in 1976 in Great Britain. There's an astronomer, um, and his name is Patrick Moore. He did a radio broadcast, and he did this as an April Fool's joke. He told everybody, "Okay, at this time, you're, you know, jump in the air and, and you'll, you'll, you'll float." Um, and he did it completely as a joke. Well. Now, what is happening is every few years, this story comes up and gets circulated again, but it's getting circulated as being something that's true. And the most recent incarnation, which is really interesting, is a fake news site called 
uh, Daily Buzz Live created a fake tweet snapshot. It's not even, it wasn't even a fake tweet. It was a snapshot of supposedly a tweet that NASA sent out, which, which stated this as fact. Of course, totally bogus, totally made up. They manufactured the whole thing with Photoshop, right? And um, so, um, anyway, but it's just one of the many, many things that is circulating out there that is, um, that is false and that people keep falling for. And you'd think they would learn, you know, <laughs> after a certain number of times, but it just doesn't happen yet. So, <clears throat> how many fake things do we see on the internet? <clears throat> there are so many these days. Um, you know, Mark was saying we're in the golden age of the con. It's also the golden age of the fake news story um, and fake information. I mean, fake everything, fake quotes, fake videos, fake, you know, it, the list goes on and on. Um, so old wives tales, myths, legends, rumors, spoofs, hoaxes, they've been around forever. But now with the internet, it's so, it's so much easier to get that information out there. And if you're not using your critical thinking skills when you look at these things, it's easy to fall for them. And some of them, like this zero G fake tweet snapshot thing, it looks really real, you know? I mean, if I looked at it, and I didn't know better, if I, if I didn't know in my own head that NASA would never send out a thing like this, <laughs> you know, I guess maybe I would, um, I would believe it. So, as Mark Twain famously put it, a lie can tra travel halfway around the world while the truth is putting on its shoes. And he wrote that a long time before the internet was around. So it's even worse now. Here's an example of how fast BS can spread these days. Um, this is an account I, I got at the Atlantic online. Do you remember a few years back seeing a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. making the rounds on Facebook? This was not long after um, uh, Osama bin Laden was killed. So mm -hmm, I saw it too. It came in on my Facebook feed um, from, from numerous friends. And the quote was, I mourn the loss of thousands of precious lives, but I will not rejoice in the death of one, not even an enemy. Great quote, right? <laughs> totally made up. Um, it actually... Um, the way it came to pass was kind of interesting. It was actually a mistake. Um, it got mangled. It was actually a thought by an English teacher who then added a quote after it by Martin Luther King. And somehow in the process of it being forwarded on and on and on, the quote marks disappeared. It got shortened. And her original thought was attributed to King. <coughs> But because it seems so appropriate to the story of the assassination of bin Laden, it kept making the rounds. So anyway, so this, you know, there's, there's numerous kinds of fake stories and, and false information. And I'm, I'm basically going to talk about the ones that are really, really, really super fake. There's a whole <coughs> other class, uh, there's several other classes of misleading news stories, um, which I just can't get into because we don't have enough time. Um, so I'm going to stick to the real outright fakes. Um, so why do we believe in BS stories on the internet, even though we should know better? <coughs> A lot of it is because we want to believe. The story often triggers one of our primal hopes or fears. And it's not unusual for emotions to, re to derail our critical thinking. We're bombarded with so many things all the time on social media. And we just have to develop um, a better BS detector. That's all there is to it. Um, and the other problem that so many of us have is we have to control that itchy trigger finger before you send that, you know, click that share button on Facebook. You gotta think about the story and you gotta think, 
well, is this really true? And, you know, should I really spread it around if it isn't true? Um, you know, the other thing that tends to happen uh, is that sometimes things are forwarded on Facebook. It's a joke, but because of the way sometimes Facebook co cuts off comments, it looks like someone's sending you a real thing. Um, this happened to happen with my boyfriend a few months ago. <laughs> he sent me a story because he thought it was funny um, about uh, an orgy in Belgium that involved senior citizens. <laughs> and supposedly seven of them died in the orgy. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> so immediately, <laughs> I, I, I put a comment um, in and I said, I don't, I don't think this story is true. <laughs> and then he came back and said, oh, ha, 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 I just sent it to you because it was a joke. And I said, see, that's how these things get started. <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> um, so different kinds of fake news stories. Uh, so that's an example of a joke or a spoof that gets taken as fact. And this happens pretty frequently. There's a lot of humor sites out there. The Onion is one that is quite famous for having its stories picked up and spread around as though they're fact. Um, but there's numerous other ones too, including this, this one with the, about the senior orgy. Um, it's uh, something called Nordpress Belgique. And uh, because the website is in French, I can't really tell what it's all about, but it looks like it has numerous humorous things on it. Um, but, um, but anyway, but it's kind of, you know, easy to fall for. Um, so still other stories are outright hoaxes. They're, make up, they're made up by somebody who thinks it would be funny to trick everybody. And that happens pretty frequently. Um, still other stories are written to draw traffic to a specific website. Because if you know how things like Google AdSense work, you, you get you know, money for so many clicks on your website. Well, if you can write a fake story that gets you a million hits, you're gonna make a little bit of money, right? Now, this is also what happens with tabloids. Tabloid newspapers are have always been in the business of making up sensational news stories. They're still doing it. But, of course, now they do it on the internet. They're drawing in those eyeballs and, um, you know, and sometimes people believe that they're true. So here's the big question. How can you tell the difference between true and false information? Well, of course, you can research things. <coughs> I mean, that would be the natural thing to do. But a lot of us don't have time for all that research stuff. Um, you just want to be able to look at it and, and figure out, is this true or false? So I have a couple of quick ways that you can do this. Um, I can't trick, take credit for all of these tips. I got these from some other really great websites. And I'd like to mention um, that, that some of these tips are mine. Some of them came from craft.com, some of them came from lifehacker, and some came from truthorfiction.com. So here's some clues to detecting a BS story. First of all, it sounds unbelievable. <laughs> so easy, right? But some of us will jump right past this step and we won't bother <coughs> considering whether the incident in the, in the story is something that could actually happen. For instance, zero G day. Here's another clue. It's too good to be true. For instance, we'd all like to believe in a miracle cure for cancer, but if it does happen, it will be the biggest story in the world and it will be everywhere, <coughs> not just on some oddball website. Here's another clue. The story mentions it has insider information that big government or big business or the establishment don't want you to know. Here's another indication. The story doesn't make sense. It might have contradictory details or will lack a certain internal logic. Or if it originates from a website specializing in humor. <laughs> which I already mentioned, people get taken in by this all the time. Here's another thing. 
There's a lack of trustworthy information in the story, especially when there's no authoritative source quoted. Many of these false news stories will just kind of state everything and not having, you know, anybody actually saying this, you know, anybody responsible for disseminating information. Or it'll be a nameless source, such as a highly placed government source or a close friend of. And so if you see those things, it, it, it very likely is an indication that it is a made-up story. Um, now what's tricky is sometimes the, these well-done fake news stories will actually have what looks like a real person delivering the information, you know, such as, you know, Joe Smith, police spokesperson for Tallahassee, Florida. Okay, um, and I and I know of one um, recent thing that was making the rounds that fooled a lot of people because it did have a, a name in there. Um, so if you have your doubts, um, the thing to do is to Google that person's name along with the organization or business or, or entity that they're representing and see if it's an actual person. Um, here's another clue to a fake news story. It's world-changing news from an obscure website. For instance, you see the headline, fluoride causes Alzheimer's disease. Take a look, scroll to the bottom, and see where that information actually came from. It's entirely possible that it originated from something like wehatefluoride.org. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, um, I had mentioned the British tabloids before. Uh, please beware of anything from a British tabloid. <laughs> Most notably, the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail is a big offender. Um, they run real news stories side by side with completely bogus, fictional, made-up stories. So they had a story um, not too long ago about a crazy Polish dentist who, who pulled out all her boyfriend's teeth. <laughs> it's a great story, right? Totally false. They made it up. However, this particular story went viral, and it was picked up by numerous reputable media outlets I don't quite know how that happens. I guess everybody was asleep at the wheel, but um, it actually ran in the LA Times and the San Francisco Chronicle. <laughs> and I'm sure that they were, there were a lot of red faces. Really. I guess it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, another thing is um, sometimes you will see bloggers listed on reputable news sites, and you have to also be wary of them, because a lot of them are just writing their blogs for free, like Huffington Post. And, you know, anybody can write for the Huffington Post as long as they, you know, accept you, and that doesn't mean that you know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, just, you know, always consider the source. Okay, um, other clues. Um, if you see a story on a website with a similar name to a trusted media source, be cautious. There was a story recently that Hugh Hefner died. Did anybody hear about this? Okay. Totally bogus, right? The way that it happened was somebody put up a website called NBCToday.co and ran the story. Well, a lot of people took it for fact because it said NBC, right? Mm. So they thought it was some kind of affiliate to NBC, but it wasn't. So it's really easy to get taken in, but you know, the scammers are getting smarter all the time. Um, here's another thing that should set your BS detector quivering. A story that predicts a future disaster by a very specific date. You might recall a news story that circulated a few years ago which said, in effect, the world's seafood will run out by 2050. The story was based on a study that hinted at such a thing, but didn't really say it. But a reporter took that to mean that it definitely would happen. Then other media jumped in with similar stories. 
The scientists involved in the study immediately backpedaled, but hardly anyone was paying attention at that point. By the way, 2050 is a popular date with disaster predictors. Other things, <laughs> other things that supposedly will happen in 2050 include Muslims taking over Europe, the world will run out of water, and some asteroid or other will wipe up all, all life on Earth. Will those things actually happen? Who knows? Disaster prediction is a cheap way to get attention, but it works. So you'll also want to use your critical thinking skills when you see a poll disguised as a news story. Keep in mind that polls are often paid for by special interest groups who then release the information to the media as though it's actual news. And you're probably aware how easy it is to to skew the results of a poll however you want, depending on what types of questions you ask, um, how many people you ask, and you know so, some other things. It's really, really easy to do. Um, even if you have a supposedly unbiased poll, a lot of people who are polled will just say whatever. They'll say whatever comes into their heads. Do you remember during the last election, there was a poll that that they did of uh, people uh, and talking about the different candidates, 14 people said they, 14% of people polled said they thought Obama might be the Antichrist. 14%! Higher. <laughs> so, beware of polls. Okay, and also, please don't believe any news story that claims there is a miracle cure for cancer, obesity, or clean energy. Those are some things that get circulated a lot. They're just not true. So what do you do about the BS? There are some things you can do. First of all, don't spread anything around unless you're sure it's true. <coughs> and it's really easy to find out if things are true. There's a couple of great web websites I'd like to mention. Snopes.com is the, the wonderful urban, reg, blah, 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 urban legend resource. Um, they have really good information. They've got great archives that go back, you know, to what, like 95? I don't know. Um, long time ago. Um, so I would definitely go to them first. Another really good one is truthorfiction.com. And um, they're, they're really good at, at getting things that are, you know, really super current. Snopes sometimes lags a little bit. And um, uh, one of the current rumors <laughs> that they're addressing, that Snopes is addressing that I saw last night is, the Obama administration's plan to ban donut sprinkles. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, geez, what is wrong with those people? <laughs> so, you know, stuff like that. So, if your cousin or your best friend is sharing something with you that's false, say on Facebook, Please do them a favor, gently reveal the truth to them so that they won't spread it around anymore. You, you know, a, a good thing to do is, is maybe to post a comment with a link to Snopes and say, you know, you might want to check this out. It's a small gesture, but it may keep a BS story from infecting the ones you love. <laughs> Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Are there any major media outlets that you 
field do have especially a low rate of publishing calls in the sleep disorder? Um, well, I think, um, you know, the New York Times is, is typically the in industry standard. Um, you know, I would say the Wall Street Journal is, is pretty good, too. Um, you know, I, uh, sometimes I see things floating, or I, I, would, I, I would say TV outlets are especially bad. For some reason, they just seem to pick up a lot of stuff, and they often run ads that look like news stories, which is a whole another category. Um, so, um, yeah, but I would go with the New York Times. If the New York Times is saying it's true, then I'd, I'd go with that for sure. And there's another website <laughs> called Quackwatch. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. What was okay? Quackwatch. I'm not sure if it's Tom Ned or Gordon. How much have you been paid by big ma media to do this? <laughs> <laughs> and, and what has what what has WeHateFluoride.com ever done to you? <laughs> dot org. Dot org. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, she didn't answer how much she's being paid. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Um, anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah. 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 Revision on um, the Wall Street Journal. Mm -hmm. uh, don't trust anything they say about climate change. <laughs> right. Well, that's very true. <laughs> that's very true. You do have a they point have there. A strong bias. <laughs> yeah. No. It's it, in general. It's just good to be well read and and to read a variety of, of things online as well as things in print and um, and just get a sense of uh, you know what what different places are all about. Um, so. Yeah, probably obvious to most everybody in here, but most of those tips are equally valuable for you know evaluating just other kinds of claims, like mm -hmm. advertising. You know, this is right. the term of this or whatever. It's like the same, especially the ones where you do this. They have an anonymous person, a, a you know spokesperson of some kind, but you don't know who they are. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more, Richard. Uh, I was just going to say that I've noticed lately that there seems to be a lot of Facebook, where people have purposely cherry picked an article that's going around or you know, a mm -hmm. news article right. to their own uh, design. In other words, they sponsor, they're trying to promote a product or promote something. Right. They're cherry picking a section. Yeah, and that's a whole nother thing, you yeah, know, because it is it is really hard. Yeah, and that's a that's a case where you got to look around and see what you know other trusted news sources are, are saying about that topic and try to get a, a, a balanced view of, of what's going on. Well, one thing, if you follow a link to something, if you click on it, and then you decide you don't want to go back, you don't want to go any further, mm -hmm. and you click go back. And comes up with this warning, are you sure you want to leave this page? That's pretty much a big giveaway. That, yeah. You don't want to go to those other pages for sure. Okay, Jan. Yeah, I just wanted to say, having grown up near New York, um, when the New York Times was just a print you know, newspaper, mm -hmm. that they used to say, all the news that's fit to print, right. and yeah. then we would say, and some that isn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, well, let's move on.